Amazon Prime Video's newest series, The Terminal List, is based on the Terminal List novel written by former U.S. Navy SEAL Jack Carr. And Jack Carr's novels focus heavily on realism and authenticity in all aspects, but especially when it comes down to the weapons and gear the main character, James Reese, uses. Just like Jack Carr, James Reese is a US Navy SEAL, and Jack Carr wanted to make sure that all the weapons and gear and clothing and truck he drives and even down to the coffee he drinks in the morning is grounded in realism and is all things that US Navy SEALs really like to use. So in today's video, we're going to take a deep dive into the weapons and gear of the terminal list, and specifically James Reese's everyday carry. Now keep in mind that there's a ton of weapons and gear throughout this TV show and I am not going to be able to show all of it here in this video. So if this video does well and you guys want to see a, a follow up video to this with even more gear or if you want to see something specific that I missed that you're interested to know more about just let me know down in the comment section below and hit that like button to show your support on this video so I know you guys want to see more stuff like this but let's start things off with the rifle James Reese and Alpha Platoon used in the first episode during Operation Odin Sword the team was running 10.5 inch barreled HK 416s fitted with a Geisley MK 15 10.5 inch 416 handrail and in classic Garand Thumb fashion, we're going to go tip to butt on this bad boy, and I'll make sure to have all these attachments listed down in the description below for you guys to take a closer look at if I go too fast through these. But starting off, they have a rugged suppressor Micro 30 on the tip of the barrel here. Just behind that, on the top of the rifle, we have an L3 Inside Technologies PEC 15, and then next to that, there's a Cloud Defense Rain Weapons Light. Just under that on the handrail we have a Magpul foregrip. And for the optics we have a Vortex AMG UH1 red dot. For the magazine they're rocking a Gen 3 Magpul P mag. And then towards the back we have a BCM stock and pistol grip with a Magpul MS3 QD sling. And I gotta give huge props to the props team of Terminalist. Wow that was a lame joke because this gun it looks so freaking hot. HK, for the love of all that is good, please give us an affordable, semi-automatic civilian 416. Next up, let's take a look at Reese's more casual, everyday carry setup when he's not on deployment or going out snatching souls. The picture you guys are seeing right now is from episode 8. His everyday carry does change a decent amount throughout the show. For example, his, the watch he's wearing here in this picture is an Oris watch, but you can also see him wearing G-Shock and a Resco watch throughout the series. The knife in his hand is an Emerson folding pocket knife. You can also see a rubber wedding band on his hand. The hat he's rocking is a Columbia tree flag hat, and of course he has his trusty Gators sunglasses that we see him wear throughout the series. And while it's hidden away in this picture, he is carrying his Glock 19 inside the waistband. And if you've seen the series all the way through, there is a good chance that this axe right here haunts you in your dreams. There's a specific scene involving this axe that is equally amazing and traumatizing. This axe is the Winkler Knives R&D Front Full Spike Tomahawk with the Tribal Maple Handle. Winkler knives and tomahawks are very popular in the SEAL teams, especially this specific axe. Tons of Navy SEALs carry this axe. They use it both for breaching and for unaliving. These axes are handmade by master bladesmith Daniel Winkler, and they run for about 815 US dollars. Next up, let's talk about plate carriers. In the final episode of the series, James Reese is rocking a Gadsden Dynamics ALPC plate carrier in black multicam. The plate carrier is set up with four AR mag pouches going across the front, and then on his belt he has a Sentry tactical dump pouch, extra pistol mags, and of course his Winkler Tomahawk. 
And the rifle you see him using in this last episode is almost identical to the 416 setup he's rocking in episode 1. The only big difference is that he's rocking an Accu Fire Thermal Optic on it. And of course we have Reese's team pistol, the Sig Mark 25. And on one side of the slide it is marked with his name and rank, and then on the other side we have the letters LLTB, which stands for Long Live the Brotherhood. Next up we have the rifle seen in episode 4. This is a full auto BCM SX4 with a 14.5 inch barrel. And we have a Bravo Company 13 inch M-Lock compatible modular rail system. And for optics we have an Aimpoint Micro T2 and an Aimpoint 3x magnifier. Here we have a rugged suppressor 3 port brake and a cloud defense weapon light. And then just like the 416, we have a Magpul PMAG Gen 3 and Magpul flip-up sights, as well as a Magpul MS4 sling. And then on the handguard, we have a burn-proof gear BPG rail wrap. And of course, we cannot forget about the black rifle coffee hat we see Reese wearing all throughout the series. It is the black multicam AR flag trucker hat. If you don't already own one of these hats, you definitely should. They are my favorite hats of all time. I seriously own like four of these AR flag patch hats from Black Rifle Coffee. Not sponsored, but just a really sick hat that I can't recommend enough from a really solid company. And in case you are wondering what coffee James Reese likes to drink, it is, of course, Black Rifle Coffee. Next up, we have the pistol and bag Reese used in episode 2 when he's going after Josh Holder. The gun is a Kimber 1911 with a rugged suppressor Obsidian 45. And Reese has a Firefield Optics Paracord sling hooked to the gun's lanyard loop so that he can hang it from his neck under his jacket. In the bag is a Hill People Gear Runner's Kit Bag, and he's using it as a break-in kit with all of his lock picks and such hidden within the bag. And I think that's going to be the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for checking it out. Like I said, there's still plenty of gear to go over, so if there's anything that I missed that you would like to see, make sure you let me know down in the comment section below. But I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll talk to you guys later.